Heart of Darkness, how I just did not like you. I wanted to like you. Everyone at home wanted, everyone at home, as far as I know, likes this game. Caddy didn't like it, I didn't like it. It just, it's too flawed. I have to see it go. Seems a shame to just burn a universally loved game like that, don't you think? Well, besides that, I made a promise. I gave it my burn it rating. I'm going to burn the game. No questions asked. Well, I'm sure the internet's gonna have a lot of questions. It's kind of like the whole point of the internet, right? Can I just have this? Yeah. Can I burn yeah. the game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I invited you here right, to celebrate right. the death of this you're right. game. You're right. Yeah. Let's cool. let's celebrate its death. All right. <sighs> Goodbye, Heart of Darkness. You shouldn't put your lips on that. Keep it together. Keep it together. Caddies, this is for you. Ca <coughs> <sighs> Ugh. Ugh. Oh, God. Yeah, I think we're good. You gonna answer that? Answer what? Your phone. Well, I would answer my phone. It's not ringing. Yeah, it is. Don't you hear Pro Jared's theme song? It's probably answer it. It's probably Pro Jared. All I hear is Star Wars music. That's all I'm, I'm hearing. What are you talking about? Hey, Jared, what's up, man? What's going on? Hey, Gerard, are we still doing our collaboration thingy? Yeah. Is that Jared? Yeah, it's Pro Jared. Yeah, yeah, we're still on for collab month. You know, you, you actually caught me in the middle of remembering a little seance for, for Caddy and this horrible game. You killed Caddicarus? It's kind of a long story. It's too hard to explain. Oh, there, there, man. Sometimes it's our job as reviewers to just keep on reviewing, no matter how hurt we are. Or how many people we've killed. Yeah, I guess so. It's just... Sometimes it's just so damn hard. Come on, do it for me. I don't want to. Come on, do it for me. Just this once. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it. But we're playing the Illusion of Gaia. Illusion of Gaia? I've never played Illusion of Gaia before. Yes! The Illusion of Gaia, the lion, the wardrobe, and the witch. Yeah, that sounds right. Welcome to a brand new episode of The Completionist. And guys, we are in week three of Collaboration Month. And this week's guest is a friend of mine that I truly, truly admire. Uh, I, I never told him this, but I was a huge fan of all of his writing articles on ScrewAttack.com. I'm so thrilled that he is into the YouTube universe of making content. And honestly, he's been one of the coolest friends I've had in uh, recent uh, years. Guys, Welcome to the show, Pro Jared. Hello, Gerard, and Completionist fans. What's going on, man? So before we start, Jared, tell everyone at home why you chose the Illusion of Gaia here on The Completionist. Well, the Illusion of Gaia has always been one of my favorite Super Nintendo RPGs, and I've finished it a lot of times, but I've never actually completed it, so I was hoping that you could help me. Awesome. Without further ado, let's dive into Illusion of Gaia. Illusion of Gaia, which in Australia and England is more commonly known as Illusion of Time. This game, being developed by Quintet, was released in 1994, the same year as many other instant classics. What was really awesome about my experience with this is that as a kid, I didn't know anything about the game. I just saw commercials for it and thought it looked like The Legend of Zelda. So my parents got me it for Christmas, and I'm really glad they did. 
but Batman and proficient at playing video games Jared the Third Knight of the Dungeon in which he masters! Uh, yeah, close enough. What does the title mean? It sounds so mysterious. Oh, is it like a Scooby-Doo cartoon? Scooby-Doo and the Illusion of Gaia! Where's the nuts? Okay, now wait just a sec. You know what? I actually don't know what the title means. I've never played the game, so I wouldn't know. And why did they change it to time in other countries? I don't know, I just asked the question. That's a legitimately good question. Oh, shoot. I done goofed. Illusion of Gaia is a sequel to the game Soul Blazer, and it's the second in a somewhat weird trilogy, with Terra Enigma being the third in position. Our story takes place on Earth with real locations, yet in a fictitious setting. It's interesting that Quintet chose Earth as we get to visit places like the Great Wall of China. I guess it's supposed to make the world more relatable and more realistic. Our hero, Will, is an explorer who recently returned from an expedition that had gone south. His father, a famed explorer, was on the mission with him. Unfortunately, when Will returned home, he was the sole survivor and he doesn't remember a thing. All he knows was that he went to find the Tower of Babel and he found a flute while on his quest, but that's it. This one time, at explorer's camp, I found a flute and then everyone died. The game starts off a bit slow for my taste, but the characters that we meet on our journey are fun and full of life. The princess of Edward Castle, Kara, ends up entering Will's house, and she's trying to stay away from her castle, but is quickly escorted back. All of Will's classmates end up tagging along, as Will's first task is to return a ring that King Edward demands. Upon his arrival, Will reveals to the king that he does not have the ring, and then Will is put in prison. This is where the game starts, as Will's father communicates to him, informing him of what his future entails. Here is where our stage is set. Will is the chosen dark warrior by the Dark Lord Gaia. There is a comet heading towards Earth, and in order to stop the comet, Will must collect all six mystic statues and place them on the Tower of Babel. If Will doesn't do this, the world will become full of evil, and subsequently, all life will come to an end. See, this is interesting because Will's power as the Dark Knight is not necessarily evil. It's more like a Pokemon, where it's more of a type of power and not necessarily evil. It's just classified as dark. But, let's be real about this, Will's powers are pretty awesome. His ability to take on other forms just makes the game for me, but we'll discuss that more in gameplay. The other thing we aren't going to go over in this review is the evolution of the plot, except for what happens at the very end, because the adventure is one that you have to simply experience on your own. There's also too much to explain that goes on from now until then, so you might as well just pick it up if you want to know more. In turn, here is a montage of bits of the story set to music from The Dark Knight! Oh boy, did the developer reuse assets for this game. In fact, Quintet is the kind of company that went on to use many of the same assets in other games as well. Look familiar to you? Quintet is the same company who did ActRaiser, and by the look of the fonts, the text, and sound effects, it's clear that they got a little lazy. Or maybe they're all connected some way. I don't know, you decide. The graphics are kind of a fusion between The Secret of Mana and Zelda with a top-down perspective. Even with previous assets being used, the game feels distinctively different than most other SNES titles of this year. This game comes off as a hidden gem of the Super Nintendo. But hey, at least you got a dope shirt! That's true! The copy my parents gave me came bundled with a t-shirt! Do you still have that shirt? This is actually a replacement shirt. The first shirt I got, I was wearing during the 4th of July and I was playing with a sparkler when a spark flew off and hit the shirt and it burned a hole into it and I had to throw the shirt away. I actually remember being devastated for weeks. You're looking mighty fine, Jared. Mighty fine. Thanks, Greg. The music fits well with the situation. When you're in a town that's filled with nice people and things are at peace, the music is soft and sweet. When you're in an epic situation or at a major plot point, the music matches just that. This sounds like a basic necessity in most older video games, but older games sometimes didn't find a good balance. Few titles come to mind.
The Illusion of Gaia is kind of like a hybrid hack and slash RPG. Using a pointed flute, Will must travel all across the world to find the six mystic statues to stop the comet from colliding into Earth. And the various temples and areas you visit are diverse enough that you really feel like you're going on a journey. There's almost two different types of modes when playing Gaia. I say modes because they're not really a thing, but I'm calling them modes. First mode is where you can talk to the town folk, push the plot, or just kind of run around different cities. The running mechanic in this game is really fun. You really get that feeling of speed and it only gets better with the second mode. The second mode is battle mode. When in battle, Will uses the flute to attack his enemies. The enemies have a life bar displayed in the top right and you can basically attack and 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 attack until your heart's content. That is one dangerous musical instrument. You okay, man? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, bro. I'm good. It's fascinating how sharp a flute can be, because this thing tears monsters up, and the variety of monsters is very nice. Very few monsters get recycled, which is awesome, and I kind of hate when that happens. There is one area in the game that does this, but we'll get to that later on. And leveling up has never been easier or more fun. For your character to grow, all you have to do is kill all the enemies in each room. And once you've slain all the enemies, Will will be given a level up in strength, defense, or health. And you will notice a difference as the game moves on. My absolute favorite thing to do in the Illusion of Gaia is to harness the power of Gaia. You can transform into Freedon, the Dark Knight, or Shadow. Let's start with Freedon. Freedon is awesome! He's like a big bulky version of Thor that harnesses dark energy to destroy his opponents. He can take more damage than Will, deal more damage than Will, and be way too cool. If I had to compare him to anything, I'd say that Freedon is to Will what the Zords are to the Power Rangers. Go, go, Freedon Rangers! Go, go, Freedon Rangers! Playing as Shadow is pretty fun as well, but Freedon is definitely where it's at. Shadow is only playable in the last two dungeons and is fairly simple to use. The nice thing about playing as Will, Freedon, and Shadow is that they actually get moves that change the dynamics of the game. You'll instantly see why Freedon is one of the most broken characters in the game. And you know what? It's dope. It's freaking sick. Don't complain that you get to play as this badass god looking dude. There's one thing which I've never actually done, but we're going to do today. Collect all the red jewels. What makes these red jewels such a pain in the ass is that they're very missable. So missable that Quintet included a strategy guide in the manual to help you play the game. Which is pretty nice of them if you ask me. However, you will have to follow it to a T as there will be some areas you cannot revisit. And by some, I mean almost all of the entire first half of the game. It is nice that as you collect them, you get rewards for your progress. The bosses in this game are pretty challenging at first, but once you learn their patterns, it's kind of a piece of cake. And what's even more awesome is that in these fights, you can be Freedon and rule the world! Go, go, Freedon Rangers! Go, go, Freedon Rangers! Go, go, Freedon Rangers! You will fight the Freedon Rangers! So you made it past all the different historical areas, learned a lot of great skills, collected all the red jewels, now it's time to head to the Tower of Babel. Diving into this section, we deal with the boss gauntlet that actually I don't mind. Fighting bosses again are alright as long as we've learned a lot of skills and upgrades within the progress. None of these again are too difficult and in the first half of fighting these, you can get full life and save in between. There's a moment of realization in which Kara realizes that she's the Light Knight during the final climactic moments of the game. With her powers combined with Will's, it's up to you guys to stop the comet. The... Wonder Twins? What's really sad is in the moments to follow, Will and Kara realize that... No, don't spoil it! Did you not spoil the ending just this once? It's such a heartfelt ending, but it only really works if you've seen the whole game. All right. Uh, we're such a tease this week. Show's over! Nah, it wouldn't be an episode of The Completionist without addressing the...
So, Gerard, what do we get for collecting all 50 of the red jewels? After the grueling journey of getting the 50 red jewels, the jewelry man in town will then take you to the gem's mansion, in which a prize awaits. Now, this is the one area in the game where the enemies are in fact recycled, but I don't really mind. They're more durable and put up a much bigger fight. Now, the real question is, what is the prize? Well, it's not really a prize, as it is a surprise. A boss fight from an old friend from Soul Blazer. Blazer, the main character in the first game, Soul Blazer, defeated a boss named Solid Arm, and that's the thing that's right in front of us right now. When he was defeated, Solid Arm's life force was then split into red jewels. Through the manipulation of the labor trade, Solid Arm was able to restore his life force. And you know what? You're kind of the sole reason as to why he's back. Good job, dude. Oh, Jesus! This guy looks really tough! How do you even kill him? This is the hardest boss in the game. There's tons of easy speedrunning strats online to take him down, but I wouldn't blame anyone for just kind of taking their time with this one. Solid Arm is the real deal, and after you beat Solid Arm, you get transported back to the Tower of Babel, and you get nothing but bragging rights for killing him. That doesn't seem like it's worth the struggle to me. Same here. Look, I'm all about the collect-a-thon. I don't mind collecting everything in the game in order to get something for a completionist's sake, but here's the problem. Collecting everything for a boss that doesn't give you anything, especially when the items are incredibly missable, just makes completing the game not worth that extra effort, unfortunately. Come on, those bragging rights are totally worth it. If you're a kid who beat it in the 90s, The Illusion of Gaia isn't very difficult, but it's also not very straightforward with the story. Most of us who bought the game when we were younger had the guide to help us through, but even with that, the game isn't as straightforward as it should be. Some of these dungeons do get fairly intense. But with that said, for never playing this game, I loved every minute of it. The only gripe I had was dealing with the red jewels. I felt that I had to really make an effort to ensure 100% completion on our end for those jewels. And as much fun as I had finding them, the fact that you can miss them fairly easily and never even know it does kind of suck. And it sucks kind of more knowing that the jewels are really just for bragging rights, especially because you can easily miss them. Oh well. Well, the good news is now you can take all those red jewels, put them together, and then put it into the chest to your brand new Freedom Zord! Jewel fight and Freedom Rangers! Illusion of Gaia was a fantastic experience that I really didn't expect anything of. Never playing the game before, I went in really blindly doing absolutely no research, and I was pleasantly surprised at the overall experience I got. The game nails every aspect of itself. The graphics are really good, the soundtrack is awesome, I really like the story, going across the globe in different locations is excellent, and the gameplay is really, really fun, especially when you get to transform into Freedon or Shadow. Getting the red jewels is a nice little bonus for some power-ups, but if you miss a handful of them, it's really not that big of a deal. But, with that in mind, this game gets our completious rating of... Finish It! Finish it, Freedom Ranger! That's all the time we have for today, guys. So as always, leave your comments in the box below. Leave suggestions for the future of the show. And guys, let's give a warm round of applause for Pro Jared for being on the show. Jared, thank you so much for being here, man. It was truly an honor. Thanks for having me on the show, man. Honestly, this was something that we should have done a long time ago. But I'm glad we finally got to do it. I had a lot of fun. And hey, if you ever need another game to complete, I've got plenty. Now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and... Whoa! What? In the clips? How did the lights go out during the day? Wait a minute. That noise. I've heard it before. Necromorph!